My name is Andreas Johansson. I'm a captain for the Corona Fire Department in Southern California. A, a, a recent uh, deployment we had using TAC uh, on uh, New Year's Eve 2022, we had uh, a large rainstorm come across uh, Southern California. Uh, we responded to a swift water rescue, a report of someone uh, that would possibly fallen in the river. Uh, we had a large area search over about three miles uh, in the dark, driving rain, and being able to track our dismounted personnel, there was a lot less radio traffic of, of trying to determine who had searched where, where they had searched. We were able to see responders in real time. Um, when we did get uh, someone find a, a rescue point, they could just drop it in the map, send it to everybody. We're all in the same sheet of music. We could all uh, kind of pivot and, and move to that location very fast. The role that technology plays in the fire service now, um, it's been kind of stagnant. I see it for the last, let's say 10, 15 years. Technology and CAD and GIS has, has really has moved forward, allowing us to know where fire engines are. We can see mapping elements, but when we move away from the fire engine is really where we're, we're left kind of with a gap. Uh, we don't know where our, our, our responders are that are dismounted. We don't have a, a common operating picture. Um, for us to kind of see where other forces are. So we're left asking a lot of questions over the radio. Where are you? Where is that? Yeah, so the future I see and, and where we're kind of out the Corona Fire Department is, is using uh, the TAC application to answer those questions. Uh, we can see where our other uh, responders are. We can do target correlation, drop a point on the map and all be on kind of the same sheet of music. So the real-time collaboration with TAC and its effectiveness and saving lives really comes down to, to time us not wasting time um, trying to determine where someone is. We have the ability to, um, as the military calls it, target correlation. So we're able to drop a target on the map. All of us sync up together in real time and figure out the best plan of action before we might waste uh, you know, an hour of time hiking out to some area and realize, oh, it's too steep to get here. It's, you know, and it's hard to tell it in dark, but with TAC, we're able to, to measure distance and terrain and come up with plans, get real-time ETAs of aircraft. So all of it comes down to time. Um, and when someone's life is all on the line, um, you know, time time could be life, life or death. And having to try to explain to everybody your location, now you can just say, I need help. Everybody sees you intact and can pivot to come help. Connectivity is, is an issue though. So uh, that is something that you have to plan for. We use an acronym in the fire service and this came from the military, the PACE plan. So you have a primary plan, alternate plan, contingency, and emergency plan. Those typically are, are used to talk about operational um, plans. I, I've brought PACE into the communications and data plan. You know, you, you have to have an alternate means. Uh, if you're relying on LTE or cellular for your operation, if you get out of the range, you know, you're, you're dead in the water with TAC. Although you can still use TAC by yourself to navigate, you will not see um, other members. So that's where bringing in you know, alternate plans, um, alternate communication networks like uh, mesh radios and, and the like come into play. The biggest benefit or the change I see with bringing mesh radio in is the confidence people have in using the situational awareness tools. So if they're thinking, well, this only works on the edge or when I'm in, the, I'm in an area that's close to an urban environment, they think, well, these tools aren't useful outside of that. That brings that confidence up that know that they have continuity of operations. If I move out of cellular network, I know I have an alternate means. I can keep using the tool. The way I see mobile mesh radio is improving safety at a wildfire response is that continu continuity of operations, taking you from the LTE uh, out, out, of, out of that LTE fringe area and then being able to keep sending um, our position location. That's probably the, the number one um, thing that, that really, really helps. When you call for help, people know where you are.